Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a great question from Ian, and Ian asks, how can I get some cool pictures of blurred cars and stuff? Well, Ian, what you're talking about doing is using a slow shutter speed to capture motion, and that's what will give you that blur. Now, we previously did an episode about using a really fast shutter speed to freeze motion to make sure that nothing was blurred. Well, in this episode, we're going to be doing the exact opposite. We're going to be creating blur to really give us some uh, artistic expression that maybe doesn't exist in the real world. In fact, I'll show you something we're going to do with this uh, Adorama TV logo right here. What I'm going to do is I'm putting my camera on shutter priority mode. Now on a Nikon, that's the S mode. On this Canon camera, that's TV for time value. And then I'm slowing my shutter down to a 15th of a second, which is a pretty slow shutter speed. Now I'm doing this to sort of show you how you can exaggerate things in reality. Now what I'm doing here is I just have a Canon 60D with a kit lens. It's a zoom lens. And the cool thing about a zoom lens is that you can combine zooming things with a slow shutter speed and you get some really cool effects. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to point my camera at this Adorama TV uh, logo that's animated here on our TV and I'm going to actually zoom out as I take the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this. I'm focused, I'm going to zoom in and click, and that gives the Adorama TV this kind of really cool look. So here's the shot that we just took of that. And you can apply that to all kinds of things outside, like trees and cars and things uh, that really give it some uh, kind of motion that's artificial when you're shooting in daylight. And at night, you can use a really long shutter speed and a tripod, and you can capture motion uh, with things that are moving with lights, like cars and planes and uh, all kinds of cityscapes and things like that. And it's a really, really cool effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and show you several examples of things you can do with a really slow shutter speed. Well, we're here on location in Tempe, Arizona on Mill Avenue. It's a place with all kinds of different things to shoot. The sun is going down really rapidly because I want to shoot after dark, actually. But before the sun does set, what I'm doing is I'm looking for things that have a lot of color. Things like this sign here for Tempe, Arizona. It's got a lot of reds and greens and things. And the cool thing is what I can do is I'm putting my uh, camera on shutter priority mode. I've taken the ISO as low as possible so I can really stretch those shutter times. And then I'm dialing the shutter to be as slow as it possibly can before the uh, aperture value starts to blink at me saying things are going to be overexposed. But once I do that, what I can do is I can use my zoom to create some motion. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the sign and then I'm pushing the shutter release and at the same time I'm snapping that zoom lens and what that does is it's going to create this uh, effect of motion. So let me take a few shots of this sign and show you how that looks. With the sun in this location, which is really bright in my eyes, what I'm doing is I'm not only looking for color, but I'm looking for things that have strong pattern like this grill. And I'm shaking the camera just ever so slightly. So I'm focusing on this grid and I'm taking a shot there. And that just gives us a little bit of motion. That was at about a 15th of a second. I can convert that to black and white and I get a really interesting look. So I was just walking by this little uh, display here and I saw these really cool lights. And using the same technique as I did on the sign, I can get some really interesting effects. Now what I'm doing is I'm changing the, the speed at which I'm zooming in and out to get different effects of uh, motion on these lights. So let me take a couple shots and show you. I'm starting out about a sixth of a second at, at uh, an aperture value of 11. So here we go. situation like this where we have moving water, we can really make it look like glass if we have a tripod attached to our camera. What that allows us to do is really slow down the shutter speed to something like one and a half or even two seconds and that will allow us to have that water as it's flowing, it'll turn into something that looks like glass, but everything else that isn't moving will look normal. 
And we're able to have an exposure that's that long because the sun is just over the horizon of these buildings that are around us. But enough of the sun is reflecting off of some other buildings to give some cool highlights on the water. So the other thing that I would normally do is use a cable release. Well, I don't have one today, so what I've done is I've set my camera to a two second delay. So when I push the shutter release, it counts to two seconds, and then it takes the picture. And with the combination of using that and the tripod, that guarantees that there is absolutely no camera shake, and I get a really interesting picture. So let me take a shot, and we'll take a look and see how it looks. All right, well, the sun has gone down. I've got my tripod, I've got my camera, and that means we can really slow down the shutter now and get some really interesting effects. So we're gonna shoot down this really cool street, and I'll show you what we get as a result. All right, so what I've done here is I've set my camera on a tripod. I've set it to a four-second exposure, and uh, the camera is uh, automatically calculated that the aperture is gonna be about five, six. So once these cars start moving, what I'll do is I'll take the exposure, and we'll get some really interesting results because all of the lights will be blurred. So as soon as these guys start going, I'll take the shot. Well, I really wanted a super long exposure, so what I did was I set my camera into manual mode and I put the shutter at 30 seconds, which is about as long as this will go without a shutter release cable. And then to compensate for all the light that's coming in, I set my aperture value to f22. Now I use the internal meter to figure out how uh, to set my aperture. Now with that set, I can shoot this now for 30 seconds, and so all of the activity of the cars is really gonna be picked up. So as soon as these guys start going, I'm gonna let this go. Now that thing that's very key is I have to have a tripod because without that, well, the camera's gonna be too shaky and it's not gonna work. So this is almost 30 seconds, so let me show you how this one looks and it should be really cool. Now that we've done the work with the tripod, we're gonna do some stuff that's handheld. We're gonna do the same thing that we did earlier with the cool sign with lots of color, but this time we have all these lights that are coming in. So what I've done is I've set my camera to shutter priority mode, which is the S on an icon or TV on a Canon, and I've set this to about a half a second. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep the uh, lens still and move the camera. So I'm gonna push the shutter release and move the camera. And we'll get some really neat things. Then I'm gonna keep the camera still and move the lens. And you'll see how all these lights really create a really interesting effect. So let me first move the uh, lens. There we go. And now I'm going to do that with the camera steady. And you can see we have two totally different effects. One looks sort of like a spirograph. One looks something different. The key is make sure that you're in shutter priority mode and you really slow down your shutter. Now I'm zooming from my uh, farthest focal length, which is on this lens, 135, mm, 135 millimeters out to 18 millimeters. So you wanna go from close to far and that's gonna give you the best results. Let me tell you how to set your exposure for some crazy stuff like we see behind us. Now what I have here, I don't think you can see it on the video, but there's an old abandoned building, it's an old flour mill. I really wanna get a shot of that, and I also wanna get the sky and make sure it's exposed. So to set the exposure, what I'll do is I'll set my camera and I'll point it to the sky, and then I'll meter off the sky and set the exposure that way. Now I can do that either by setting my camera into manual mode, or I can set it to uh, shutter priority mode and uh, use auto exposure lock to lock in the exposure on the sky and recompose. The easiest way though is to shoot in manual mode so that it's locked in and it stays that way. So I'm gonna point my camera to the sky. I have my camera in, in uh, manual mode. And when I do that, it meters at 30 seconds and 6.3. And so once I have that, I'm gonna recompose on the actual flower mill here. I've locked in my focus and then I'm taking my shot that's gonna take about 30 seconds, but you can see when this is done that we have a nice, rich blue sky and a really cool picture of the flower mill. I'm at the tracks of the Phoenix light rail and I wanna get a really slow shutter speed to show how the light rail looks like a really long snake as it goes by. And so what I've done is I've preset my exposure while we're waiting for the train here. And so I have my camera all set up and I have it set to a half a second and the aperture is opened up to 3.5. That's gonna let in a lot of light. And then I also increase the ISO to about ISO 400, so that'll uh, allow us to capture some light. So we're gonna wait for the train, and when it shows up, we'll take a few shots and show you how it looks. All right, 
going to show you something else, and this is something you can do with a really bright flashlight or a video light, which is what I have in my hand here. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to take the camera and open up the shutter for about 10 seconds or so, and then I'm going to take the light, I'm going to turn it around and point it at the camera and move it all around, and when I do, that's going to create some really interesting shapes. And so uh, for this, Leon Trujillo, who is our videographer, has volunteered to be uh, sort of the uh, subject of this picture, so I'm going to give him some wacky hair using my video light. So here we go. I'm going to shoot some video of uh, me making hair on Leon out of light. So here we go. All right, to make this happen, what I've done is I've set my camera to manual mode. I've set it to eight seconds, and then I have my aperture at f8. I metered this uh, using the meter in the camera uh, previously. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna press my shutter release, but I have to really quickly run over to Leon, and then I'll paint the hair on his head. But to do that, to make sure I don't have a trail of light, I'm gonna turn off the light really fast as I zip over there. So turning off the light, taking the picture, zipping over, lights back on, and now I'm painting crazy hair on Leon, and I'll make kind of crazy loops. And here we go. All right, now <laughs> let's take a look and see how Leon looks with this crazy exposure. All right, we're gonna do one more because this is so much fun, but to make sure that we actually can see Leon's face clearly, I'm gonna turn on the pop-up flash on my camera and we'll do it again. So here I go, I'm gonna turn off this light. I'm taking a picture, I'm running over, and now I'm gonna do just crazy kind of hair <laughs> like this. I hope I don't bust your head. All right, and I think we got it. Let's take a look and see what we got with Leon and his wacky hair. Well, that was a lot of fun shooting outside in the day and at night. Now the thing to remember is you can do this stuff with just about any camera. We've been using this Canon 60D with a kit lens. It's just right out of the box. You can use a point and shoot camera for a lot of this stuff. You won't have the zooming capabilities necessarily, but you can use one of those as long as you can control how slow the shutter speed goes. So try it with your camera. And if you get some great stuff, please uh, post that on our Adorama TV Flickr group so we can see what you got. Well, thanks for joining us this week. It was a lot of fun. Remember, if you have questions about photography or photography-related gear, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. And now I'm painting light on his head. Oh! <laughs> Is that... <laughs>